Hello, I'm Jonathan, and welcome to another educational video by The Entropy System. Since we started making videos, Wynne has received a lot of messages from people saying that thanks to these videos, they've recognized symptoms of dissociation in themselves and have since sought treatment or have received a diagnosis for their multiplicity. The idea that we can help systems in this way is thrilling to us, so today we've worked together with our therapist to compile a list of resources for people who think they may have dissociative identity disorder or a similar dissociative disorder. The first resource I want to talk about is the test that our therapist gave to Wynne to help her further recognize her own DID. It's called the Multidimensional Inventory of Dissociation by Paul Dell. For short, I'll call it the MID. The MID is a test that's 218 questions long and asks people to rank the frequency of experiences on a scale from zero to 10. Zero being never happening at all and 10 being happening all the time. These answers get filtered through a number of categories and what you receive in return is a graph that shows where your answers compare to answers from patients who had no dissociative symptoms who have borderline personality disorder, dissociative disorder not otherwise specified, post-traumatic stress disorder, and dissociative identity disorder. The MID is available in nine different languages and also has a specific test in order to screen adolescents. While you do have to be a clinician to submit this test for review, our therapist is worried that some people might try to impersonate a clinician in order to try to take this test themselves. She wants us to specifically discourage individuals from doing this. If a person were to receive results back on this test and see that a computer ran them on high levels of, for example, attention-seeking behavior or manipulativeness, this could be devastating and invalidating to the individual unless they are working with a professional who knows how to properly interpret that score and apply it to that specific individual's life. If you want to take this test, the best way to do so is through the help of a mental health professional. The second and similar resource is called the SCID, or the Structured Clinical Inter review for the DSM-4. There wasn't an updated version for the DSM-5 because it seems that they believed that the diagnostic interview here is more than enough to cover any changes that were made in the new DSM. There are two versions of the SCID that's available. The SCID-1 assesses for all the major mental disorders, and the SCID-2 assesses for personality disorders. The SCID-1 takes between one and two hours to take, the SCID-2 takes between an hour and a half to one hours to take, and both of them are translated into 17 different languages. Our therapist doesn't use the SCID simply because of how long it takes to interpret the answers into results. There is an entire manual just dedicated to interpreting this test, and so she chooses to use the MID instead. However, it is still a very good diagnostic tool. The third test I want to talk about is the DES, or the Dissociative Experiences Scale. This is a test that you can find online. It's 28 questions long, and similar to the previous tests, it asks you to rank recurrency of experiences from 0% to 100% of the time. You may think that 28 questions sounds extremely short compared to the other two tests I've talked about, out, and you'd definitely be right. The DES is a decent resource for professionals who perhaps have no experience with dissociative clients and would like to screen and see if one of their clients may have issues with dissociation. However, it's not a reliable diagnostic tool at all. Something as complex as DID can simply not be fully analyzed in 28 questions. One final note that our therapist wanted to add for all these previous tests is to keep in mind that even the most thorough tests can have false negatives and false positives. This is especially true with patients early on who are dissociative 
to their own dissociative symptoms. And they don't realize the frequency or the magnitude of which these symptoms manifest in their own life. This is why our therapist didn't just get the results back from the mid and say, all right, you definitely do have this. She took those results and kept them in mind as she continued to treat and learn about us until she felt confident that our experiences matched up with what the test actually said. Some of you might be in a position where you don't have access to a mental health professional to help you take these tests. Or perhaps if you're like Wynne, you just want to absorb any resource you can about the disorder that you're experiencing. For that reason, we've compiled a list of books to recommend for people who want to more thoroughly understand dissociative disorders and the treatment for them. The first of these books is Coping with Trauma-Related Dissociation. One of the co-authors, Kathy Steele, is one of the leading researchers on the field of dissociation. The book includes educational material on dissociative disorders, as well as homework assignments for patients that helps them to better recognize and manage dissociative symptoms in their own life. When our therapist recommended this book to win, it did come with a caution that we'd like to extend to you, which is that some of her clients while reading this book have found the description of dissociation to be so on the nose that they started to dissociate themselves. If you do decide to read this book, please do so while listening to your body and to your thoughts and pace yourself if necessary. The next book is Looking Through the Eyes of Trauma and Dissociation. This book teaches professionals on how to treat dissociative disorder and how to recognize risks that come with EMDR that may not be present in non-dissociative patients. Even though it wasn't specifically designed towards clients, Wynne found this book very educational and validating. It helped her to better appreciate her place and role in the system, and some of the coping skills that the book recommends are things that we've actually incorporated into our own daily life. The last resources I want to share are specifically geared towards littles. Even though littles in a dissociative system are caused because of dissociation, even though they're a part of all that, it can still be very difficult for them to understand what's going on. Treatment for systems works most effectively when everybody is on the same page, so it's important to explain things to littles in ways that they can comprehend. Dear Little Ones by Jade Miller is one of the first books that we read to our littles, and it was a very lovely experience for us. The book is written to system littles directly and teaches them that even though scary things might have happened in the past, those things are not happening now. It reminds them that they now have freedom to make choices that help make themselves feel safe, and it instructs them on how to be a productive member of the greater system. One of the great things about this book is that the author, Jade Miller, has recorded it as a YouTube video, so if you don't currently have the resources to purchase this book for yourself, you can have her read it to your littles for you. Jade Miller does have other books for littles that are equally wonderful, but they're not currently on YouTube as far as I know. All the Colors of Me is another book that helped our littles quite a bit. It's not specifically geared towards system children, but rather children in general, and explains dissociation in an easy to understand way, offering a vocabulary for these children to be able to explain what's happening to them. Finally, The Coloring Book of Healing Images, which is not just a good resource for littles and children, but for anyone. The book is exactly what it sounds like. It is a coloring book of people being at peace and reclaiming personal power. Not only is it calming to sit and color these pages, but being constantly exposed to these kind of images reminds one to take time for personal care. I hope these resources are as helpful to you all as they were to us and our system. I'd also like to remind you that none of these resources I've discussed are meant to replace therapy or proper treatment, and that all of them work best when shared with a therapist. Links for everything I've discussed will be in the description below, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.